Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So, today's object of interest is this GTX 580 SO. You might be inclined to think, uh, shouldn't that be SOC? Um, no, this is just an SO. So, Gigabyte has made SOC cards, which stands for Super Overclock, but this one is just super over and doesn't clock, which is very fitting because this card is very slow. <laughs> so, yeah, this is pretty much the uh, high-end GTX 580 that Gigabyte made. Um, and I must say I am um, disappointed. Um, I am aware there's different revisions of this card and I got pretty much the worst. Mine is a 1.0 and there's a I don't there's a 2.0 but I don't know what the 2.0 does but there's a 3.0 that has a lot much better MOSFETs. Um and this one doesn't. This one has a combined maximum current capability of around 210 amps with a 12 phase V core VRM. <laughs> so you might think, oh it has 12 phases. Uh, it, it's ha it has the same phase count as a GTX 580 Lightning. This has to be good, right? Yeah. Um, so, for whatever reason, Gigabyte with this card chose to use NTMFS 4921Ns for the entire V-Core VRM. So usually you see one high-side MOSFET and then two low-side MOSFETs. And the two low-side MOSFETs usually have lower RDS on, so they run less hot and better current capability. Um, this one just uses three of the same, which the 4921N is the high side MOSFET you get on a reference GTX 580. And they use it as low side here. Admittedly, you still have 12 phases, which is twice as much as a reference card, but as I've said, 210 amps. That's not enough. Um, so there's about 17 amps per phase in here. So the uh, 4921N has 8.8 .8 amps at an ambient temperature of 25 degrees. That's the continuous drain current rating. Uh, yeah, you have two of these MOSFETs uh, used as low sides, even though they are usually used as high sides per phase. That makes about 17 amps, or 17.6 to be exact. <sighs> And with 12 phases, yeah, that's slightly above 210 amps, if I remember correctly. So this kind of sucks. Plus, um, see this fan here, because, um, yeah, they put two of the two of the three low, uh, MOSFETs you have perfect. I can't say if it's the high or low side, because well, they're all the same. But yeah, um, there's two MOSFETs on the back of the card for each phase. <laughs> Just like... Uh, not that the heatsink on the front for the one MOSFET that's there is very substantial, but like... Okay, uh, thumb modes are not gonna be that great either. Which wouldn't be an issue if you had really good MOSFETs that still can handle a lot of current when they're hot. But these can't. Uh, yeah, so... The PCB is actually not that bad. The PCB is pretty good. It's It's just the MOSFETs are trash. Like... And the 3.0, if I had one of those, would have fixed that because this has much better MOSFETs, I think 60 amps per phase. Like, if you, if you with four phases of that, you could replace 12 phases of this. So, <laughs> yeah, um, let's... Yeah, um, so apart from the, from the MOSFETs, this PCB is actually decent. The heatsink is decent as well, like, the, the fans are 100%. This is not that loud, especially considering that these Silent Wings uh, 3, which oh, silent, are also at full speed, and the card is about the same. Uh, yeah, it produces about the same amount of noise, which, well, these Windforce coolers from Gigabyte, in my experience, they've always been pretty silent, except when the fans die, then they rattle. But when the fans are okay, which is kind of surprising on a 10 year old card like this, but um, yeah, that's full speed, and it's pretty silent, if you ask me. Like, I mean, if you complain about this, have you ever heard an ASUS card? <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, let's let's move on to uh, actually running the card. So you can see, those are the settings, and it's not that I'm limited by the voltage. Uh, I have a tool 
right here. Uh, I can pretty much put any voltage for core and memory in that I want. The thing is just, it's not doing anything. Because either it's a heat issue, which this heat sink, well, it maxes at like 70 degrees uh, if you run a stress test. That's not that great, but it's also not bad. Um, could be heat issue, it could be something else. Uh, giving it more voltage did not give me any more clocks out of the core, neither the memory, because this card is on AFR, and, well, AFR is like, like two, it, one gigabit Hynix AFR, GDDR5 is the full name. Um, I've had two cards with these. One of them was extremely bad, didn't scale at all. It actually scaled, scaled negatively with voltage, and it clocked very low. The other card, exact same memory chip, scaled with voltage, like scaled with cap mods, was completely fine, it clocked pretty well in the end, um, that card was pretty good. Sadly, I gave that card away. And the other one became an e-power. Um, this one also has AFR. And when I put more than 1.6 volts into this, uh, the card black screens. So you can probably imagine what kind of AFR I got on this card. So that's a disappointing core paired with... Well, it still does 2400, which is the best out-of-the-box I've seen for AFR yet, but... Samsung e die just kind of, and also g die like any Samsung chip, it just kind of, yeah, it, 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 it's just a lot better. Uh, 2400 is decent, but if you have a Samsung card, it's just gonna, it's just gonna mop the floor with it. Uh, so yeah, that's about the best I got out of the card. Let's run Fire Strike, it might actually even crash. It should pass. Because I didn't like max it to the last uh, megahertz, but well, like there there might be about 10 megahertz more in the core. There for sure isn't 20 because I tested that. There may also be 10 or 15 megahertz more in the memory, but there sure as hell isn't 20 as well. Um, so yeah, the card is. Uh, Pretty disappointing. You can see the, f the thermals are like... It climbs slowly because this heatsink is actually a vapor chamber. So the way the heatsink is built, the, the two fans on the left are on a vapor chamber with fins on it. And then there's two heat pipes, one on the top and one on the bottom, going into another fin stack that's like sideways and not... Uh, um, like this is horizontal, this is vertical, and then the last fan is blowing at that extra fin stack, which does also go uh, cool the VRM. But one third of it, the other kind is on the back where I have the fan pointed at it. Uh, so we passed GT1. Here we are on GT2. Like for a short benchmark, I think it shouldn't go over 60. But let's see, we, we can find out right now. Uh, 54, 56, 57, 58. Uh, yeah, it should equal, it should probably stop around 60. I mean, we're just running 950, and we're not running a lot of voltage into the card, just because, like, I couldn't see any more scaling at that point. It probably just needs to be delitted and run on water. That sh should bring it to 1 gigahertz. If not, this will literally be the worst 580 I ever had, which is a pretty disappointing, considering this is a custom card with a custom heatsink. Yeah, I I really feel that this is a... Oh, we actually maxed at 64 degrees. Oh, damn. Just sort of the side of my... It's not on camera, sadly. So 64 degrees, a bit hotter than I thought. Guess we'll see it in combine. But, yeah. Um, I really feel that this is a gigabyte moment. Um, if you wonder what gigabyte is, uh, it's sort of... I don't know if it's a running gag. I've only ever seen the, the joke made once by people by a person that isn't me. Uh, the joke originally came from Boltzoid when he overclocked some memory on a gigabyte board and the board just kind of didn't do what it was told and, and then Boltzoid made a joke of like, hey, the board is probably giggling at me because it's messing me up and that's how gigabyte was born. And I really feel that this is a moment like this because this card has to be... It. Yeah, this this card is um, not good. 950 core on the 
the temperatures are actually not that different from a reference blower. And the reference blowers usually don't get to 1 gigahertz. They usually need water for 1 gigahertz. So I'm gonna I'm not gonna say the card is really bad. It's just this is more what I would expect from a reference card, not from what is essentially an SOC PCB with well, I mean there was an SOC with this exact PCB with the same MOSFETs as far as I know. So essentially this is just an SOC without the C which is fitting because this one doesn't clock. Uh, yeah. So, I was really hoping... So, so I got this for 25 euros, which is... At least I didn't pay, like, some ungodly amount of money for this. Um, I was really hoping to get a body to do SLI with, with my DirectCO2. Because the 580 DirectCO2, it's my favorite GTX 580, because it just works. <laughs> You would think that's not that hard to do, but for Fermi, turns out having a card that just works is pretty dang hard. Um, so if if we look at my GPU collection over here, you see there's two lightnings there. Both of these just have random issues from time to time, which is why I don't enjoy running them that much. Then there's a bunch of 480s and 580 reference card, and then there's another 580 lightning that I am um, in the process of repairing. I've started already. I've somehow like partly gotten it to work, but I'm not finished yet. And yeah, okay, sorry, there, my camera holding thing uh, ran out of power. Uh, yeah, so I'm not holding the phone in my hand, which means it's a lot more like this. So, where was I? Yeah, so I really hope when I pick this up that this card would just... would just work. <laughs> And I mean, I haven't... well, yes, I ran into the issue, which is real overworld memory, you get a black screen, which I count as an issue, because ideally, it wouldn't be doing that. Um, yeah, so it looks like this is one of the cards that I'm just gonna put on the shelf and never use. <laughs> just because it's so bad. Uh, this really, really sucks. Um, I have been thinking about doing one thing with it, which is I'm just gonna bench it until the VRM blows up, like 211 amps. That's not much. I will probably blow up the VRM uh, when I when I use the card for benching at high voltages. So I've been I've been thinking. Okay, I'm just gonna bench it until it blows up, and then I'm just gonna buy a bunch of MOSFETs that are better than the ones that it has. And I'm just gonna swap out all the MOSFETs. Uh, it's gonna take a while, but I've done it already. Um, again, getting here, that 7950, uh, well, there's a heatsink on it now, and it's glued on, so I can't really remove it, but I did make a video a while ago about this one, where I, well, I didn't really swap the MOSFETs, I more like added some to like empty solar pads, but swapping is just removing the old MOSFET and then doing the exact same thing. So I've done it in the past, uh, it's a bit tedious, but I think the payoff will be worth it if I can get this card to have a VRM that doesn't blow up. Um, because, like, the output filter is pretty nice, the face count itself is pretty nice, uh, that you have full voltage control and software without having to do any help mods is uh, pretty nice. Uh, the heatsink... Well, it, it's silent, at least, for my taste. Uh, like, this is 100% fan speed again. I mean, if I'm gonna put it on water, I'm sure, like, you can't run the card with the reference heatsink deleted because it needs the IHS, which is a bummer. Um, but if I run it on water, I'm gonna have to figure out something for VRM cooling, but... Yeah. Uh, I might, I might do the VRM MOSFET swap thingy, which... Well, I'm gonna have to swap 24 MOSFETs. Maybe even more if I swap the high sides as well. Um, but I think I might... I might be able to talk myself into doing it, uh, because as the card is now, it's basically just... Well, it's nice to look at on the shelf, and not much else, because this... this sucks. The card really sucks. Uh, so this is very much not the body for my DirectCO2. 
I'm thinking of just picking up another direct CO2 if I can fa find one. They, they're actually kind of hard to find for a good price, or even to find at all. There's not that many of them. Uh, actually, I think lightnings are more common than direct CO2s in the, in the German market. Uh, but that might be wrong. I might just not be looking that much. I'm mostly looking at Kepler cards right now. Actually, I bought a lot of cards. I don't really need more. Uh, so, yeah. Um... I'm dragging this video out more than it has to. Like, you've seen the card run, you've seen it kind of sucks. There is a PCB overview coming. Uh, I'm pretty much gonna say the same thing. The PCB is pretty great, except for the MOSFETs. They suck a lot. Uh, and yeah. So, I hope you are less miserable than I am. And I hope you somehow enjoyed watching this video, and so until next time, goodbye.